Welcome back to Ball Talk with me, Lewis Bryan, and today I'm joined by footballer for St Albans, Ken Charles, and presenter Noah Jones. Boys, we're going to start off by giving our thoughts on Arsenal's weekend game against the um, Wolves at home, and then we'll follow that up by giving a preview to the Aston Villa game this weekend coming, yeah? Saturday, 5.30 kickoff. Perfect. Sound good? Yeah, all good. Uh, what did you think of the performance, Noah, against Wolves, that is? I mean, you can't go wrong with a 2-0 win, opening game of the season. Um, clean sheet, two good goals. Um, a lot of the players look sharp. There's a couple that I think we need to have a little think about, but first game of the season, then England players, for example, um, haven't been back long. So we'll take it. Um, there's nothing, no injuries, no red cards, no silly yellows, although they should have had a red card, which I'm sure we'll get to. Um, but yeah, quality, 2-0 win. Why not? Yeah, what do you think, Ken? Yeah, I agree. Solid performance. Clean sheet, three points. You can't really complain about that. Um, like he, Noah mentioned, a lot of the lads have not really had much time to get into no time. <laughs> pretty, yeah, pretty much no time. Yeah, so mad. that was a game about trying to get the job done. Um, you ain't expecting a perfect performance first game of the season, but they got the three points and you just move on. Yeah, and Havertz obviously got the first goal, didn't he? Would you? Um, I don't know. What do you make of it? Because he's obviously maintained a good. <clears throat> good amount of form for a long time now mm. um, is this just like the perfect system for him or is he actually as good as what Arsenal fans think he is <laughs> or it's most a, Arsenal fans it's think a weird is. one isn't it because Arsenal fans think everyone's good yeah. um, I think he's a good player I think he's quite frustrating to watch in the sense that like he's strong he's quick he's aggressive his first touch is very good he always seems to be in the right place but pulling the trigger sometimes is woeful um, he's not going to score you worldies you're mm -hmm. not going to get a 40-yard volley outside the box. It's going to be six-yard box tap-ins. Um, but look, if that's going to get us 20 goals a season, I'm, I'm all over that. Is it getting us 20 goals a season? I think it might this season. Yeah. I think it might. Do you reckon, Ken, 20 goals from Havertz? I think he gets 15-plus comfortably. Yeah. Um, take that. Yeah. I think he could, if we create and if we actually you know, dominate games as much as we have done, he could push for 20. But... My only doubt would be coming to what you said about pulling the trigger and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, he's, don't get me wrong, he's he's really good. He's really good, but has he got that killer instinct? Does he like, you know, take shots? Because sometimes you want to see a striker taking shots, maybe in positions where he shouldn't, yeah. but you've seen, okay, that's your nine. He's got that ruthless edge. Um, they need that mentality, don't they? Yeah, yeah. that mentality. <laughs> yeah. And obviously we didn't really have that with Jesus either. Um, yeah. As good as a player he yeah. is, he's not necessarily a killer in front of goal and sometimes in tight games that can be the difference especially when we get onto UCL games when you get mm. onto you know tight Premier League games where you know maybe we drop two points in those games and that can be the difference come the end of the season but if we go with Havertz I think he'd have a good season I yeah. think I think he scores 15 plus and with the goals we've got all over the pitch it could be enough yeah you almost want from a striker like to have a few of them moments where you think oh why is he shooting yeah, like yeah. past you the ball to. you need you, you want that from a striker in some sense it sounds a bit silly but it's one of them with Havertz like if we if Arsenal don't create a lot of chances he's not going to really grab, like you said grab the ball and do something special on his own like if he's one on one almost not very confident in him mm -hmm. whereas if he's like like he scored on mm -hmm. perfect example how he scored against Wolves like getting his head on the end of a cross mm -hmm. he's, he's good for that, that uh, kind of stuff it's interesting you said because I was going to ask because you you two obviously play football. Needing about this thing of like needing a killer, needing a aggressive number nine, yeah. Osman, Haaland, Jokeres. If all if the goals are shared amongst the team, which Arsenal do, was it last two seasons ago where I think Odegaard, Martinelli, Trossard, Saka, maybe Jesus yeah. all got double figures? Do you then need one big target man striker, or can you just deputise between everyone? I don't know. For me, like it just it takes the risk element out of it. If you have that, mm. if you don't, like if you have a number nine, that is a killer. If you don't have that, it's you're asking too much of players where that's not their number one job. Mm -hmm. Like midfielder's number one job, Odegaard number one job is to create. Saka, his his job is of course to to score goals, but it's also to create. If you're only relying on these, then when the striker's not performing, yeah. It's a. It's just, you're asking for trouble when some some players aren't on form. Mm -hmm. You for me, it's it's important to to have that killer number nine. We see it with Man City. I think Ken, you mentioned it last week that when Man City won the league without a striker, really, the first thing they did as soon as the season ends, they got in Haaland. Striker, it was yeah. a killer. 
and they just won the league. They obviously f- see something that they didn't like or somewhere they could improve, mm-hmm. and that's what they did. So I assume we think Havertz isn't a killer. He's not a killer. No, he's not a killer. Of course he's not. But mm-hmm. he gives so much to the team away from goals as well, in my opinion. Um, yeah, yeah. So he, you, we can't just rely on him, but yeah, he, he gives so much, and I'm happy with him starting at the moment, for sure. Mm. Did you think, um, like we said, a few of the England boys look <coughs> tired. They've had no time back. Do you think that made Arsenal look a little rusty, or do you think do you think they looked a little rusty, a little like out of a little out of sync? I mean, they did have a few good chances, Wolves, didn't they? Mm. Ray pulled off an yeah. unbelievable yeah. save. Yeah, it sort of settled people's nerves a bit. Mm. Yeah. Um, the, is it is it rust or is it just first game of the season yeah. nerves? Yeah. I think it's more that it's. Like that lack of time. Yeah, yeah. You're used to thinking back in the last season when we was flying, um, everything was ticking. Obviously, they've had the break. Guys have gone off to the Euros and stuff like that. They've come back now, and it's literally just that first game. Mm. It's, you know, literally they got the job done. And I think anything else would be being a bit too picky. I think because it's difficult that first game. All the they have to come and win. As much as it's not a must-win game, on like for them, they anything other than a win and it's a crisis, do you know what I mean? Like the fans will start talking, everyone starts questioning. So it's not easy to click on that first game, especially with, like we said, loads of players having no time. So I wouldn't say it's rust, I'd say it's more just everyone getting back into the flow of Premier League football. I think you see with Tottenham, anything could happen. Yeah. First game yeah, of the yeah, season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not predict either. What do, what do I have? What do we have? We, we I, have said like three, one, and I said 2-1 Tottenham and you said 3-1. Yeah. yeah, it's mad, 1-1. One, one. I guess it's hard to play the teams that have come up the newly promoted teams anyway they give absolutely see. everything for that game exactly. at home yeah. as well at yeah. home yeah sure. that's their first like no disrespect to the championship obviously that's their first big game right of the season especially yeah. it's a tough game but you've got to do the job haven't you if you're Tottenham you have to do yeah. the job I think it's a terrible result it is it is a terrible result um, just I just wanted to touch on so before the season started I thought I was very confident that Arsenal would definitely have a a bigger go at getting the title and I thought I think mm. we get the job done after the first game of the season I was at the City game and they looked at it they were <laughs> intense and mm-hmm. it was like high pace energy and I don't know it just got me a bit worried thinking we looked a little half stale a little bit at times and City looked at it has it swayed you in any way? Not for me No, nah. not for me I think the main thing was the result I think last season if you remember we took a while to get going and we were yeah. still getting the results so it's a long, long season and it's all about the performances become we know. We know what, you know, Arteta we know how he gets the players playing, we know what the ability is in the squad. And knowing that some of those players are probably at sixty percent and still manage mm. to get a job done, it's not easy to win any Premier League game. Yeah. So if people can come at sixty percent and basically be a, a decent Wolves team, I don't think there's any reason to be panicking. Yeah. I think that was kind of us in second, third gear as well, wasn't it? Basically. Um you're never going to be able to go full guns blazing first game of the season like you said maybe a bit of rust tiredness not enough time together it was kind of the perfect result when we weren't playing our best because we definitely weren't playing our best and if you're going to get a 2-0 against a good Wolves in my opinion exactly, yeah. um, you'll take the whole day so I think it's a long season obviously Man City are going to be very good Yeah. and we've just seen the <coughs> excuse me the here we go from Fabrizio Romano on Gundogan um, right, yeah. which could be an unbelievable signing, re-signing yeah. for them yeah. but we Kovacic, got, I'm telling you, Kovacic you was, love their, him, he was you? their best player by far this weekend. And I've wow. always liked him. He, he'll he struggle to get back in that team. Are you well, you don't think Gunnar comes straight back into the team? No, no definitely not straight. No way. Not wow. straight back no, in. No, Rodri, I think, good, I think. Uh, Kovacic and, and De Bruyne. I think it depends who they play mm. with, Kov- uh, with Kovacic and Gunnar, who they pick. But no, nah, he's got a serious competition. Wow. That's what they like, isn't it? Yeah. They've got a bench of champions that he have. That's what they do. Um, what do you are you worried about the England boys being a, looking a little tired? They obviously come off early, Saka and Rice. Yeah. Um, are you worried about that and the effects it could have later on in the season? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I think again, it's that case of they've had a very intense Euros. Yeah. They've now had a couple of weeks off. They're back to it. First game is always going to be adrenaline rush. Um, I think once they've settled down, back into kind of the Arsenal way of doing things because obviously. Arsenal, England, very different. Yeah. Um, I think they'll be fine. You, you, I, I'm glad he took them off. Yeah. It was quite nice yeah. to see Sakharov come early, so he gets the rest that he needs. We need that a few times, I reckon, early on in this season. Yeah, that, that's what will protect them long term. Yeah. I think if he just starts using them for ninety every yeah. single weekend, 
from now over the next couple of months it'll be difficult but if he can find opportunities to bring them off early like that even sometimes if possible not start them in certain games mm -hmm. that's what will give them the ability to come into the season still be thriving yeah yeah definitely and just with Saka as well I see this stat this morning um, Saka's direct co uh, goal contributions to the Premier League yeah, yeah. before the age of 23 mm. he's got 84 if you look at Cristiano Ronaldo's before the age of 23 he's got 77 Oh no! Wait, did I say twenty-four? No, you no, you got yeah, oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Saka, eighty-four <coughs> goal contributions in the Prem before mm. twenty-three. Ronaldo, seventy-seven. It's mm. like he's got more than who people argue as the best ever goal contributor in the world. Mm. What are your yeah. thoughts on that? Saka better than Ronaldo? <laughs> <laughs> it might be a bit early to call yeah. that. I think the guy is an absolute joke. I think he is severely underrated by the rest of the footballing world. Yeah. Obviously, we get told we overrate him massively. I disagree hugely. I said two years ago, when he was doing that strange transition from left back to right wing, that he would win a Ballon d'Or. Uh, and it was before Jadon Sancho, and there's been a bit of a fall off from Jadon Sancho. Mm. I think Saka is easily top 10 players in the world right now. I think I, he is ridiculous, and it doesn't get talked about enough. I think people started to see it in the Euros, yeah. when he scored that goal to get us through. But oh, he needs more respect on his name. He's a joke. The consistency brings him up as well, doesn't it? Like if you take one on one, like it, that each game performances, you probably wouldn't say top ten for me. But yeah. the fact he does it every single game of the Prem, yeah, he's it's a joke, isn't he? You look yeah. at his goals from through the seasons as well. The last four seasons, yeah, it's just exponentially gone up, and I think it will continue. He's so reliable. Like obviously, we played at the same time as them, and I could almost guarantee that coming off the pitch, checking the Arsenal score, Sack would have a goal or a assist yeah, yeah, and he's true. got both so it's just like he's been like that for the last two seasons this is going into his third season and the fact that he's just so reliable is what I think makes him so valuable because someone that you know can turn up pretty much week in week out over a season that, that's, that's, that's hard to find yeah for sure let's go on to the Villa Arsenal game this Saturday okay they got a good 2-1 win away at West Ham do you, um, do you think it'll be a tougher game than Wolves? I imagine it would be. Yeah. yeah. I imagine it would be obviously away from home firstly and obviously Villa as well coming off the back of a very good season last season. Um, you know, they caused us problems as well last season. So it will be a tougher game. Uh, you know, a proper test for us. Away as um, well. Away mainly. Um, but it's a, it's a good test to see where we're at, to see if we've got work to do in the window, if we've got work to do with with the current squad or whether we're actually, you know, where we think we are. Yeah. It's good to get those tests early sometimes. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Where do you think, listen, they, I, I looked to their team on the, on their game against West Ham mm. Saturday. They had some good players yeah, on the yeah. bench. Like, mm. they had, their squad is stacked now. Yes, yeah, silly. Yeah. Um, I mean, even, I love Ian Mason as well, who <clears> come <throat> off, I think he, I don't know if he'll start over Luca Dean, but he's, he's a serious problem, like attacking for Villa. He's very good. Um, where do you think, where do you think the game could be won or lost, Noah, for, for Arsenal? Uh, mentality, if I'm honest. Yeah. I know it seems a bit weird, but if you look back at last season, if you pinpoint one team that may have been the reason we lost the league, it's Villa. We took four points from City, four points from Liverpool, mm. zero from Villa. Mm. Um, so I think if Arteta can do one of his weird team talks before the yeah. game with a light bulb mm -hmm. and a, ones, yeah. some tweets from someone, um, <laughs> if receipts are kept from last season, yeah, it should be we in are, their mind. It should be in their mind. Exactly. We, I don't. There's no disrespect to Villa. I think they're quality. Arsenal are a better team than Villa. Yeah. It came down to mentality last season. I think if we've got it right this season, we'll beat them. And I think it's good to do it early on. Yeah. As well, when we're fresh. Yeah, for sure. I think we got to deal with. Obviously, they got a number of players. Barkley's still to play as well. That's mad. Yeah. yeah. Oh come. yeah, I forgot about yeah. Barkley. Wow. I think they yeah. got a number of players. I think if we can neutralise Ollie Watkins, we we probably win the game. He's He's been the one that's caused his problems over the last two seasons. Mm -hmm. um, and it comes back to what we're saying about having a killer in a team. Like, I think they have that where it's like, they might not do anything and then he just gets half a chance yeah. and then they're one new up. So if we can keep him quiet, not no disrespect to the rest of the team because they've got, like you said, they're stacked. But if we can keep him quiet, I think we'll be all right. My worry is uh, their right wing, our left back, because Leon Bailey yeah. looked quality. And I don't think you look at Leon Bailey before the game and go, oh, he's going to trouble us a lot. 
but a ball over the top like happened against West Ham three or four times he was on it hit the post took it around the keeper if Sinchenko's uh, left back you rotate yeah Sinchenko's not starting for me man I've said this no multiple way. times he what in general start. or against <clears throat> no, Villa it, both yeah against Villa in general <laughs> he's not starting I think he's quality on the ball right his technical ability when he's got the football at his no feet no one's better at left back on the ball for us I, I agree yeah, the, defensively yeah, that's the problem yeah, yeah. that's the issue isn't it yeah, although you so then, say so that then it's game yeah, by game not because you see, no one's better on the ball but I can, I can I've got two clear uh, clear situations where he's lost the ball on the edge of the box and they've gone and scored mm. but you, your creative players are going to do that they're going to make errors they do it at the other, at the yeah. other <laughs> he's not allowed yeah, yeah, obviously we can't yeah. like, you can't tolerate it but it's going to happen every mm. now and then he just has to really minimise that yeah. but for sure I think if you've got a Leon Bailey or someone like that that you're playing against I probably would consider yeah. is, do you think he will change out. it? do you think he will? I think he will I was shocked that he actually I, he obviously backed him low he's had a good I was shocked. season yeah I was shocked he's had that a good he started yeah. he's been playing well so there's, a, there's also a Calafiori just come in right yeah, yeah. potentially so, going to play left back and do that whole four centre backs at yeah. the back like City do um I mean, Timber you, slightly injured, and I, think, I rate. He, he, I think he, he had a on, knock. He? Yeah, he came on because he. I think he had a knock pre-season, yeah. but nothing to worry about, yeah. and so maybe that's why he doesn't start him. Because if Timber is fit, I promise you, that guy is stupid at football. Yeah. He is stupid. He would, I think, lock up Leon Bailey. He's aggressive. He might be better on the ball than Zinchenko. He's right footed or left? He's right footed. Yeah, yeah. But he, he, he can play he's anywhere. He did this yeah. thing against Wolves, running back towards goal. Two Wolves players cut, cut, uh, closing him down. He just Cruyff turned through the middle on the edge yeah. of our box. Yeah, yeah. One, it's like, what are you doing? But two, the confidence that guy's got, stick him against any right winger at left back, and I'd be confident. Yeah, when you have a player like that who has like the, especially a defender, I think when you have like John Stones, the ability to turn like a 60-40 situation to the defenders into. A 60 40 to you, yeah, just mm. by a little silly bit of skill is good. But the fact that he come on for Zinchenko over Calafiori makes me think is he really going to be in his plans as a left back if he's not even second mm. Calafiori? Yeah, like Timber come on, early back, to say, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, you don't know how, how fit he is, and yeah. what kind of pre season he's had. Um, you know, they're both they're all completely different types of players as well. Yeah, like options, you said, um, if you're going for Calafiori, it's more of a four center back. Um, mm. type of back four whereas yeah. maybe he just wanted a Timbers in Jenko type of fullback that day so I think it will depend yeah, on, right. on the opposition a lot as well he's also experienced isn't he he's done it with City you can see he's a bit of a leader within the team first game of the season maybe just to calm everyone down yeah. get him in yeah I agree yeah. Um, you mentioned about Ollie <coughs> Watkins being a big threat mm. this Saturday but he come off and they're obviously who got the goal was that Durant mm. who I've not actually seen a lot yeah. of but, um, I don't know if he's has he been at Villa a while or is he they just get him in new signing he yeah. was pr I think he was he was West pretty Ham much done West with West Ham yeah. yeah it was very very close that, yeah. and then when he scored he pointed yeah, didn't he yeah. that. arrogance um, but he, he looks good the scores, so he's yeah. not, I mean Ollie Watkins is one one trouble but we've got if he comes off there's another yeah. there's another one there so. do you know who I think is a trouble mm. it's more defensive than attacking even though he scored is Onana yeah um, I think if you look at the battle between party and newly signed Onana I think Onana wins that every time, and I think he can he can lock up a midfield. Um, and if it's between if it's Party versus Onana, I'm I'm worried. Yeah. Do you think just before we get onto our predictions for the game, do you think Villa obviously had an unbelievable season last year? Do you mm. think they'll be able to replicate that? With I mean, it's going to be it would be hard regardless if they didn't have Champions League to, to contend yeah. with, but they've yeah. got that as well. Do you think they'll be able to get top four again? Other teams look like they've they've improved a lot as we say every preseason, but. What do you reckon? You can't rule them out, but I think it'll be tough. The competition will be there again. I expect Spurs to to come back stronger from last year. I say stronger, but yeah. like, I don't know how stronger, but they should be competing mm. Something, fiercely something for that top does four. Not, doesn't convince me with Spurs, man. Defensively. But I know, I know, but even like, I don't know, it's... I know what you mean they've got the players they've there. got the players to, to the win manager, games they've yeah. got the, the managers alright they've got the players so they will be there yeah. Liverpool obviously I expect them to be to be in the top four yeah Arsenal City anyone else Is it, yeah you, are you looking at Man United Chelsea I think I think Man United will, will challenge yeah, yeah. I think they, they can't be as bad as last year I think they'll be they'll be in and around that yeah. fifth fourth spot 
Um, just depends how much Ten Hag can get them clicking, really. Mm. Um, yeah, they'll definitely be better than last year. The fact they've like, stuck with the manager is a big, a big boost. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. It'll be. I think it'll be tougher Villa because yeah. you saw it with Newcastle. Yeah, that Champions League can really, really affect your season. But I think they're probably better than Newcastle on paper. So yeah. I think there won't be as big of a drop off. The maybe one or two places. Well. Exactly. Yeah, the Emery. I mean, Emery's yeah. done it. How many Europa Leagues? Yeah, he won? he's. Um, He's yeah, good manager. Yeah, very good. There'll be a bit of a drop off, but not as much as maybe people will expect. Yeah, well, we'll go into the predictions then. What we're so good at. <laughs> the tough bit. We're so good at. Um, Have you got any right yet? I've got none right. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's good. But listen, it's hard to get. I mean, I've got results right, not correct. Scores, yeah, yeah. But I'll I'll start off. Villa away. I think it's going to be a two 0 win for Arsenal. Clean sheet. Yeah. Wow. Two 0 win for Arsenal. Same as Wolves, wasn't it? Yeah and goal scorers I'm going to go Trossard to come off the bench and it's going to be Saka again 2-0 Arsenal what do you reckon happily take that I'm going to go slightly more cagey 2-1 Arsenal um, I think they'll score over the park uh, maybe Watkins will have a bit of a game because he didn't play that great against West Ham and like I said Duran's a threat Leon Bailey's a threat Onana makes the midfield more secure so I think they're good I think Arteta has kept receipts from last season. It's yeah. going to be that. It's going to be that. That'll Come on, be, guys. That'll be in his team talk, 100%. Oh, my like, word, yeah. Up, yeah. There'll Definitely. be posters, there'll be tweets, there'll be everything. Yeah, I think we'll get them this season, 2-1. Ken, what are you saying? I'll go 2-1 as well. Yeah. Uh, um, 2-0 is very optimistic. Yes, it we is. are very good at the back. <laughs> we are very good at the back and we do keep a lot of clean sheets, but Villa are good, so I'll, I'll go 2-1. I think Martinelli gets off the mark. Yeah. And he needs to. I'll go another one for, for Havertz. Another one. So Martinelli, Havertz, 2 yeah. 1. And who does your goal scores? Uh, I didn't say it. I'm going to completely repeat it. Havertz, Saka. Nice. Okay, I like it. So 2 1, 2 1, 2 0. Well, listen, we'll wrap it up there. We'll see you there, get on. And we'll be back next Wednesday to see if we got them right. Lovely. Nice one. <laughs>